Hello, everyone. Welcome to the McMaster CAD Designathon for 2022. We are extremely excited to have you all here with us for the weekend. We have a lot of amazing challenges, amazing prizes, um, and really an amazing weekend plan for you all. So to start us off with, a little bit of introductions. My name is Jeff Suter. I'm one of the co-presidents for the McMaster Design League. And I'm Alvin. I'm also one of the co-presidents of McMaster Design League. And we thank you all guys for coming today. Um, so first off, here are our MDL seniors. So these are kind of the point of contacts for all of the teams. Um, but feel free to message all of our juniors too. Um, they also need to kind of get um, things going. So feel free to message any one of us and we'll be happy to help out. And also a really quick note, Adrian and Val are going to be um, the uh, senior technical team and they are going to probably be the ones that you're going to be seeing around alongside a lot of our other technical team members. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Awesome. So everyone has signed up for an event this weekend. Uh, I believe it's called the CAD Designathon. And a lot of people are probably asking, what is a CAD Designathon? Some of you might be returners. We've had a few people come back over the years, but a lot of people that always come out are really new and fresh to the concept. So the CAD Designathon really focuses on mechanical solutions to real world problems. There's a very large focus on how you are going to physically solve this rather than taking more of an approach of a hackathon where it's that software side. This is very much that mechanical engineering mechatronic side of things. And normally there's a large focus on 3D printing. So if anyone has 3D printers at home, 3D printers they have access to, feel free to scale out your designs and prototype them and print them. We'd love to see it when people are being judged. But if you don't, don't feel that you have to. Um, it's just one of those th cool things that, especially when we're in person, we really like to 3D print people's designs. Um, and with the online, that's a little bit more limited, but if you can definitely do it, this competition is 48 hours. So you're going to receive four design problems, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on. Uh, and you're going to have 48 hours to solve them. We're also going to be hosting two mini challenges, which you'll get details about a little bit later too. And this whole competition runs in teams of two to four. And now we get to show the video of young me talking about the last in-person design-a-thon that we had, which was 2020. So this is our 2020 McMaster CAD design-a-thon recap. Hi, my name is Jeff Suter. I'm one of the co-presidents of McMaster Design League, and we're here at the annual McMaster CAD design a -thon. You see, a design a -thon, very similar to a hackathon, but we do things a little bit different. The students are invited to come in and test industry problems, and they get to talk to industry professionals, they get to learn more about the topics at hand, and they get to pick their favorite question to work on for the weekend. Hi everyone, my name is Vivian and I am this year's McMaster Design League's co-president. At McMaster Designathon, we provide students the chance to tackle real life problems. We also connect students to industry professionals so they can get a real taste of what it's like to work in the real world. Our design problems cover a wide variety of fields, including biomedical and urban living and also interior design. This year, we had over 300 signups and also students from different universities, such as U of T, Ryerson, UIT, and Waterloo, and so on. As a student, this is a prime opportunity to showcase your skills of industries where normally students find it difficult to get that experience. With the design of we give you those problems. We give you the problems that industry wants to see, see, and it's up to you to solve them. Talking to one of the sponsors, he really seemed to enjoy our idea and appreciated that we implemented some of the feedback he'd given us during the competition itself, which really helped us to improve our design and create what we believe is an optimized solution. So 
I picked a mining problem. Basically, I actually just got a co-op, as I mentioned previously, where I was working in a mine. The problem of not having enough space to load parts in a mine cage is actually a reoccurring one in the job that I had. It's nice that we get to tackle real world problems that are actually like industry level, which kind of prepares us for the future going forward. I just love how um, helpful and how good the feedback from the judges, from the judges are. So who had a good time today? That video was always a blast from the past. That, that was so long ago. It's so it's so strange to see so many familiar faces, um, but it's really great. And we're really excited for what we have planned for all of you this weekend. But before we get to some of the details of this weekend, I'm very honored to present Dr. Sheardown from the McMaster Faculty of Engineering. She is currently the active dean in to share some thoughts uh, with all of you. No. I just wanted to say welcome and I apologize for my dog in the background. One of those uh, one of those virtual things. Apparently she's decided to chase the cat right now. Um, I wanted to say welcome to McMaster University virtually. We would really love to have welcomed you to our amazing campus and had you work on these problems in person uh, with your teammates, but I'm sure you'll have a great time. I'm sure you're going to learn a ton. This looks like such an amazing event. And thank you to Jeff and Allman for all the work that you've put into putting this together and to our industry participants because students always love to see real industry problems. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing photos or videos or whatever from the end. Um, what is the end product? I'm really excited to see that. So welcome, good luck, and most importantly, have fun and learn some, some really interesting stuff. Awesome. Th thank you for those kind words, Dr. Sheardown. I know that, you know, especially us as a student club, we really appreciate the support that the faculty is able to give us. Um, and we're really grateful that you uh, came out to share some thoughts for the start of the event. And uh, I hope students can kind of take those into the design problems. So thank you so much for coming out. Uh, and it was great having you. No problem. Good luck, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Awesome. So Dr. Sheardown, um, it was great to hear a little bit of an introductory thought from her. And now I'd like to present Kevin Mako, who is the president and founder of Mako Design, who's going to talk a little bit about Mako Design and maybe give you a little bit of insight into um, some of the ideas that you can use this weekend. Jeff Allman, thanks a lot for the intro. Really excited to be invited to speak today and to be a part of this McMaster Challenge. To all of you out there, you're doing something really special here this weekend. This is an incredible event. There are hundreds of students from around the world competing in physical CAD product development. As you know, the hardware development world has always kind of had an undertone to the tech software world. You've got the expression, hardware is hard. But I'll tell you, the industry is changing. It is changing big time. This is the perfect storm of opportunity happening right now in 2022 and emerging for hardware startups, physical invention ideas to go from that sketch on a napkin to that product on store shelves. I created a business when I was probably around your age. I was in high school and then into university, I actually incorporated in third year, went full time into this back in 2007 when I graduated, building a hardware design firm tailored specifically to small product businesses. Now at the time, everybody thought I was crazy. Every design firm owner I knew in industrial design, mechanical engineering said, look, Forget startups. You got to work with the big Fortune 500 customers. But this was ahead of the Kickstarter and the Indiegogo revolution. This was ahead of, ahead of university organizations like this that are putting together incredible competitions that not just are a competition, but is a starting point for many businesses. I've been doing this judging thing and keynoting these events for 15 years. And I have seen many, many, many companies emerged that started from competitions just like this 
to create incredible products that we touch and feel and we see around us today. I just want to give you a couple quick notes from what I'm seeing on the inside of the industry, working on hundreds of projects over the course of the year for companies at our three studios across Austin, Texas, San Francisco, Toronto, and even our little facility in Miami. I'm seeing the same major trends happening here. First and foremost, in the next 20 to 30 years, everything you see around you, everything you touch and feel is going to have a microchip in it. One way or another, the world is becoming connected. Whether you like it or don't like it, it is the reality. We are working on tons of things right now, and more and more innovations are happening as chips get easier and easier to work with and use. Second, product design tools are getting easier and easier to use. You will be using many of them these, this weekend as you're developing your products. Advanced CAD design tools, simulation software, quality control, even prototype parts, the things you can do. We're moving well beyond just 3D printed plastic and all kinds of materials that you can do. Really simple, quick test prototypes to validate your product. Third, big companies are spending less on their own internal R&D and more on acquiring the next hot startup. We're seeing this all around you. Look at the Look at things like the Nest Thermostat that's happening or Oculus Rift. All of these were startups that grew into companies that then were acquired by big players and grew up to be incredible products. More support. This is number four. There is more support than ever before for hardware. There's hardware incubators, maker spaces, co-working spaces, college and university product innovation programs, many of which are at McMaster. 20 years ago until today, there are a hundred times more entrepreneurship incubation centers around the world than there were back then. This is just one example of the many layers of support. Of course, a big one that we're here this weekend for is hardware competitions. So good on McMaster for creating one of the world's premier CAD design competitions, because this is just another example of an incredible initiative happening to build hardware. Finally, additive manufacturing and crowdsourcing. Never before has it been easier to test 50, 100, 500 units of your product, get it out into the market via crowdfunding, which is people pre-purchasing your product before it goes to market. Never before has there been an easier system to try a new product and get it out there into the market. These are six big things that are happening right now in the world today. But I can tell you, a lot of that, a lot of what will happen is going to start right here at this design competition this weekend. So get to know not just your teammate, but get to know some of the other teammates. Listen closely to what they're doing, how they're innovating, how they're thinking. And together, you may find something magical that happens that started right here at this event. To everybody here, good luck and best of luck with winning the competition here. But again, winning is just a piece of it. What you learn along the way here and just by being here is the single most important thing about taking part in a competition like this. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing those words, Kevin. I think you're right on the money. This is quite the time to be in hardware design. You know, it has really gone from that monolithic, you know, you will work at a big company and you will work on this one little part to let's just iterate, let's get it built, let's get it done. And really, I think that is what our competition embodies. And so we are so happy to have uh, yourself and Mako Design be part of the event uh, this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it. All righty. Thank you so much. So I'll turn it over to Almond to introduce another one of our um, sponsors for the weekend. Yeah. So next up, we have Software Group. And Software Group is uh, one of our gold tier sponsors for this weekend. Um, and so without further ado, I will give a quick introduction through their video.
Salford, a leader of tillage innovation since 1978 and continuing to push boundaries in technology. In 2020, releasing a new line of products unlike any other, a high-speed tillage platform, one-frame design, built with Salford's reputation of strength and maximum efficiency. Tillage engineered to carry multiple ground engaging modules. Introducing the Halo series. The HSD high speed disc, dependable aeration from the airway. And introducing the versatile Halo variable rate VRT, the newest model added to the Halo series of tillage implements, built to adapt for any field conditions thrown at it, built to get you where you need to go with no limitations. Built for speed to get you through the field and at the table. Built for durability. Built with Southward reliability. Built for tillage, how you want it and when you need it. The Halo is engineered to uphold the Southward over 40 year reputation of innovative tillage and prepare to provide a solution for everyone. Meet the next generation to add to your tillage lineup, the Halo fleet. Introducing the new VRT, built from the ground up. Thank you, Salford Group. Um, so Salford also has a amazing design problem that ha uh, we're going to introduce later down in our opening ceremonies. Uh, but yeah, we'll be moving forward. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Sorry. <laughs> Do you want to just toggle? Oh, perfect. Um, and so we've already had uh, Kevin Mako from Mako Design, we've introduced a little bit of Salford, but this event is being put on by a variety of partners who we're all very fortunate to have that are sponsoring this event. So at our gold sponsorship level, uh, we have Wolfram Research and Salford Group. Uh, Salford is providing a design problem this weekend, and they are really hoping to see what students can produce uh, as they're interested in maybe bringing some students onto their team. And Wolfram Research has a history of supporting student endeavors throughout the years, and we are extremely excited to offer their Wolfram One um, product to everybody, as well as uh, a year-long subscription to their Wolfram um, package for our winners. Um, Additionally, this year, we also have Mako and Keller who are supporting the event. Um, you'll be able to hopefully meet a few of their members throughout the event and get to know them a little bit. Um, but really, they're kind of in everything. As you saw with Mako Design, they're um, you know involved in so many different aspects and there's so many different things going on that uh, you know this is a great chance to meet and interact with uh, these different companies and organizations. Uh, we also have a variety of support uh, that is coming from McMaster itself. So as you saw, we had uh, Dr. Sheardown that joined us from the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, we also have support from the Co-op and Career Services Office, which is a great um, organization that you can check out here at McMaster if you're looking to sort of get into the co-op, get your first co-op. Uh, they're really great for the resume reviews and the interview prep. Uh, when it comes to the MES, uh, they provide us a lot of financial support and a lot of other resources, and we're very fortunate for that. And then finally, we have the Drain, who will be distributing um, a lot of the post-event swag afterwards. So big thank you to everyone who is sponsoring and is a part of the event this weekend. And so now kind of to get to what you're all here for. Um, you know, I'm going to bring on a few different members of the MDL team to introduce the four design problems that we have for this weekend. So first up, uh, I would like to bring on Aiden to introduce the Mission to Mars problem. Uh, sorry, we're just going to, sorry, Jeff, uh, <laughs> didn't get the memo. Uh, Val and I are just going to, just going to explain the problem, how we select the problems real quick. Uh, so Jeff just gave you guys a massive spoiler. Um, and that was very naughty of him. So everyone's called Jeff. But um, thanks for the introduction, guys. 
Uh, my name's Adrian. I'm uh, in my last year of mechanical engineering here in McMaster, and this is... My name is Val. I'm hopefully in my last year of uh, Bachelor of Technology in Automotive Engineering. Yeah, and we're just here to just kind of introduce tech team. So uh, there's four design problems like we have every year. And usually in the design problem selection, uh, we try to get a good variety and diversity of problems. So we usually have one that's very, very creative, where you don't need very many technical knowledge, very much technical knowledge or technical skills uh, in order to complete. And it's usually pretty fun and um, you're really rewarded for your creativity. And then we have one that's pretty mostly creative, but there's definitely some, some types of technicalities to it as well. Um, and then you have sort of on the other side of the spectrum, there's one that's mostly technical, but you can incorporate some really creative ideas into it. And then we have one that's very, very technical. Um, the one that Val and I wrote up. And so a lot of you guys who are maybe, maybe in more upper years of engineering or uh, graduates or anything like that will get to take a stab at something a little more difficult. So let's get into some problems. I'll invite Jocelyn actually uh, to introduce our first problem. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so our first problem is a mission to Mars problem. There it is, there's a slide. Uh, so essentially what we wanna see from you for this problem is you'll be designing the interior of a commercial spacecraft. So as people go off to Mars, as space travel becomes more of a reality, we need to think about what the inside will look like. So we wanna see you designing some fun things for people as they go on the seven month journey. And just keeping in mind, that there will be people in there and that um, there, there will be an economic part to it too. So just consider the business side and there will be no gravity in this spacecraft. So you can read up more on that on the handout that we'll provide to you. And Aiden actually will be your subject matter expert for this problem. He couldn't make it to the opening ceremonies, but throughout the event, he'll be there. So you can ask him any questions that you have for that. All right, I believe we have our next problem. Hello everyone, um, my name is uh, Kieran and I will be introducing the next problem which is the scuba assist and medical multi-tool problem. So this problem is focused around reducing the casualties and complications that can occur uh, during the high risk activity of scuba diving. So in this problem, you're going to be designing a single emergency multi-tool that will be able to mitigate some of these issues that may arise. So this includes wounds and uh, decompression sickness and other possible emergencies that could occur below the waterline. Now for this problem, it's important for this. Uh, it's important to consider a couple of things, such as the pressure as you just uh, dive below sea level, and also the materials because when you're in salt water, uh, you don't want something that can rust. And the weight and ease of operation of the tool should be something that is uh, pretty easy as well, because um, you might be panicking, for example, if um, suddenly you're cut off from oxygen supply. Or that's just one example. But um, for questions about this problem, you can come to me. My handle is MDL Kieran on Discord, or you can also come to Taylor Kramer, whose handle is MDL Taylor on Discord. And uh, with that being said, I'll pass it off Leo to introduce the next problem. Hey everyone, I'm Leo, and I'm very excited to be introducing a special sponsor problem from the Selford Group. So for this problem, it's farming centric. And so during farming, tillage equipment will sometimes skew from the intended path, which leads to undesirable field finish. So the objective of this problem is to design an indicator or measurement system that, uh, that can allow a tractor operator to use and see the positioning of the tillage equipment so that they may adjust the machine to make sure the apparatus follows a straight path behind the tractor. And um, if you have any questions about this design problem, feel free to contact me or Jocelyn who introduced the Mars problem earlier on Discord. And we can't wait to see what you guys come up with.
All right, guys, uh, here's the super technical one. Um, it's probably a, a problem that some of you are slightly familiar uh, if you follow the electric vehicles scene. So uh, as some of you guys know, especially those of you who uh, live in Canada with us, um, a lot of the times the performance and range of electric vehicles in the winter definitely goes down a lot. Um, they're not very good at, at heating um, most of the car, especially the cabin, and, is, and just in general, the batteries of electric vehicles uh, just tend to be incredibly less efficient when they're very cold. And a lot of this occurs when you're getting down to around minus 15 degrees Celsius. So there's there's a lot of information that you'll find in the handout and we're even providing you guys with a CAD model um, of just a, as a, of a Tesla Model S uh, chassis uh, undercarriage with the battery and all the uh, motors and everything in it. So your task is to design a system that can either insulate or thermally manage uh, both the battery and to a lesser extent the vehicle itself um, in the winter time or just in very cold climates. And yeah, that's this one. Hopefully, um, you guys will hopefully you guys will be able to do all these problems. Uh, we've spent a fair amount of time uh, writing them up and making them look nice and everything. So hopefully, you guys enjoy. And I'm really really excited to see what everyone comes up with. And I think that's it from tech. Good luck, guys, and uh, I'll talk to you all there. I have been shamed for missing the memo and spoiling. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Tech Team, for the amazing design problems, and props to Tech Team for actually creating them, too, alongside some of our sponsors. Um, they've worked tirelessly on those design problems, so props to them. Um, but yeah. Moving forward, we're talking about platforms and registration. So right now we're using Hopin and Hopin is gonna be for our large events. So for example, if you were to get out of your chair and go to a talk, that's where Hopin will be. But instead it's gonna be through stages and other um, different parts of the platform. Um, and then most, and then next up, we also have our Discord channel. So if you're not in our Discord channel right now, we sent an email uh, with all of the links and in our participant package, as well as um, we are going to also link that in the comments here if you haven't been in our Discord channel yet. So be sure to uh, log into our Discord. That's where all of our communications will be offline. So for example, if you need any help from um, our technical team or some of our mentors, or if you want to get your product judged, it will all be included in our Discord channel. So be sure, be sure, be sure to register for that um, as soon as possible. Awesome. So we've met some people. Oh, we've heard a few little bits of advice, things to take with us into the weekend. Generally, what we're going to be doing this weekend, what we're going to be doing it on. But now for actually a little bit of the nitty gritty of the schedule, this may change um, throughout the weekend. But this is what we have outlined for today for you folks. So starting off, uh, we're here right now, believe it or not, uh, 6 to 7 p.m. So this is the opening ceremonies. Um then everyone's going to have a little bit of time afterwards, kind of think of what problems that you want to do. And then we're going to be available for questions. So if you have questions for our sponsors, if you have questions about problems, this is a really great time to ask. We've made sure that everyone has cleared their schedules so people will be available for you. Uh, at the same time, we also have team formation. So I've noticed there's a few po folks that are kind of uh, posting in the Find a Team channel. Uh, we've gotten some email messages. I've gotten some DMs and things. Um, so this is a really great time to be able to um, reach out to other people and form those teams of kind of two to four. Four is usually better. Um, and these are happening on the expo and the networking. So these are still on Hopin, but if you look on the left-hand side, um, you're going to see the, those two options and that's where you can go. So the team formation is very quick. Uh, you'll kind of meet people and you'll be able to sort of form those teams. And then in the expo, you'll be able to see the sponsor questions. And then once we've kind of made our teams, we've decided the problem, uh, we're going to run an intro to Autodesk Inventor Workshop that is being hosted by our technical team. This will be a really great chance for a lot of you to brush up on your CAD skills, or if this is your first time, kind of learn those um, fundamental skills. That way you can start designing. And then on Saturday, um, we have the Help Center, which is going to open at 10 a.m. So the Help Center is available from all uh, throughout the entire event. And really, this is just a place to pop in and ask questions, whether it be a technical question of, well, how do how do I do this in CAD? I'm a little confused. Or, 
what are you what are you looking for here or just general feedback um help center is the place to go we always have you know technical team members in there they're fantastic um and so i would reach out to them we also have anthony salahor who is giving a talk at 10 a.m for problem identification and refinement in the product development process so essentially what all of that means is how to distill these problems down into their very essence to the questions that you need to answer and what you need to target in your solution. And then at 10.30, uh, we have Riley Moynes from The Forge who's coming and presenting uh, how to nail your investor pitch with The Forge. And so while this isn't necessarily a direct investor pitch, you only have about seven to eight minutes in front of those judges. So you really got to get that message across clearly and showcase what you've done throughout the weekend. And so we think that talk will be really amazing for getting those skills. And then we also have Jay Nayak, who's joining us and is going to talk a little bit about design and manufacturing process in the sheet metal industry. Uh, and so I'm really excited to have all of these speakers be a part of the event. Uh, we're going to be recording these and posting them, but I highly encourage people to come out and interact with these speakers live. They have so many great experiences and great ideas that they can share with you that you can pull into your problems. And then later that night, um, or actually I should say afternoon, uh, we have Sarah Lull who's giving um, top 10 advice for aspiring entrepreneurs and innovators. And Sarah Lull is super involved in the innovation and commercialization scene. We've had her at the Designathon before. We're always happy to have her and we're really excited uh, for her to be a part of that event. And then three to 3.30, we have Hazim who's joining us to talk a little bit about how to get that first call, how to sort of break through, get that foot in the door and really start, um, you know, kind of that career journey. Uh, and then a little bit later on, eight to 10, we're having a games night that's going to be on Discord. Uh, that could be Minecraft, Valorant. We're playing all sorts of different games, um, Jackbox, anything like that. Uh, just a nice time to decompress, relax and you know, take a little bit of time off. And then finally at 11, um, that is when the help center closes. And so on Sunday, uh, 10 a.m., the help center opens at 12.30, 12.30, your problems are due. No ifs, ands, or buts, okay? So be sure to get them in a little bit before, right? We'll do our best to make sure that everyone knows well in advance. Um, the mini challenges that are being referenced here and that I've talked about before, you're going to get a little bit more info about them a bit later in the competition. We try to keep them only in like a little 12 hour block. Um, and they're fun. They're a little less serious. They're a little more lighthearted. They're a little more creative, um, compared to what we normally see in the design problems. And so they're a great way to kind of relax or maybe to refine some different skills. Uh, 1230 is also when the help center closes and then one to 5 PM is the judging. So it's probably not going to take one to five, um, but that is the time where you'll be made available. You're going to get a form from our operations team, and then you can book your time slot. Uh, and you're going to have about seven to eight minutes with the judges to present your solution. And then finally, we're going to look to wrap up the event around 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Uh, with our closing ceremonies and the announcement of our awards winners. Awesome. So moving forward, important deadlines. So first up, we have our team formation forum, which closes at 12 p.m. EST tomorrow. So this is a very important forum because we use these details um, to actually organize our judging. So please, please, please have that filled out by 12 p.m. tomorrow. Or if you already have your group prepared and set up, the links are in our participant package, which Quinn also shared in our comments. Um, so scroll up and you'll see it's uh, HTTPS bit.ly CAD participant package. So please check that out. Um, all the forms are included there, including the team formation forms. So have that filled up as soon as possible. Next up, Jeff already kind of explained it. Submission details um, and all submission stuff is due at 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. Submission details are included in the participant package too, so be sure to take a look uh, there. As well, if you have any questions about submissions, you can also just reach out to our MDL uh, help center and, and a technical member would be able to help assist. Um, and then last but not least, Swag Forms. So we have our resume and resume submission and swag distribution form that has been shared out. It is also called um, the uh, participant 
information form, and it's also linked in our participant package. So be sure to fill that out. The resume submissions are for our sponsors. So if you want to maybe, maybe, maybe get a co-op, then be sure to um, include your resume submissions as well as your information on how to receive the swag. Awesome. And as has been sort of, <laughs> as has been explained to you, everything is in the participant package. This is the living document where you can find anything and everything about the event, whether it be links to the problem statements and how to actually um, submit for this event, whether it be who's going to be mentoring and judging throughout the event, who's going to be speaking, what's going on when, tips and tricks, swag form, everything else everything lives in this participant package. So if you have any questions, I've noticed a few people in the chat have been asking, you know, where are all these links, where is everything posted? It is at bit.ly CAD participant package. That's where you can find everything for this event. And last but not least, uh, if I don't promo these, uh, Quinn gets very angry at me. So definitely check us out on our social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. Um, you know, share that you're a part of the event, right? If you're with your team, take photos, take photos of your prototype, share it out. We'd love to see that on our social media. I know marketing likes to do a little giveaway every year for that. Uh, and I imagine they'll be giving a little bit more details. I see Quinn in the chat, he's all excited. <laughs> and I'm really excited to have you all be a part of the event this weekend. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to the submissions that are going to come in from everybody. And we really look forward to uh, meeting all of you and spending a great weekend together. Almond, any final words for everybody before we send them off to go and <laughs> get the event going? <laughs> uh, happy catting. And um, again, uh, please make sure to look at design problems. Design problems are now live on our participant package. Um, it is underneath the design problems uh, header. So be sure to check those out and all the relevant files that um, the tech team has mentioned, including CAD files, any support details are also included in that drive folder. So be sure to check them out and happy catting. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming out, everyone. Good luck with the event. Good luck with the catting. And uh, we'll be seeing you around.